Which dish do you suggest your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy. You don't even need to cook it. Hi, hippo. Boop. His face. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders. Gross. I'm going to make my grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Because he's going to make his chicken. <laughs> I've always been something of a down down home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> And gravy. I couldn't, or I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to get a bit go beef red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Uh, looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking. All right, we're just cooking partners. Mind your business. Sanders's Sanders's heart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off my man. Uh, I didn't see no ring, bitch. Did someone call for me? What's up? With, oh, dude, look at her eyes. Oh, please let there be a rock off battle. Uh, no jeeds, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Big Papa's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? When Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into a boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. I'll be working in the quartet instead of a duo now. Or a duet now. Actually, no. It looks like Big Papa was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateurs just need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you'll be able to get up to my level. Ha! <laughs> Doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner than you, for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast con complementary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks in your time and need. Oh, turn two. Turn to Miriam, your forever battle bus, he always has your back. Well, Miriam's skittish, and I feel like Colonel is uh, just kind of hanging out. And she's over there with the robot. I'm gonna let her have the robot buns. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine. Not bigger with prima donnas. Snap! Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. Sarah! We give him the treaty! Are you want some treaty? Mama just walked around the couch. They take a photo of treaty! Did Mark? No, I don't want them, want them. They can't get one of those treaties. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, the music is fine. Nope. It's back. I choose Colonel Sanders. The channel. Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair arrangements from contracts to handshakes. I took on Big Papa as my partner for the activity and I stand by it. Yes! We got the Colonel. 
Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has yeah. become his natural talent or their loyalty. Snap, crackle, and pop! Taking it. Hey, Crimson! With the other treaties! Oh, you guys are getting spoiled? Thank you for this treaty. Yum, 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 yum. How you doing, Crimson? Welcome to the stream, my friend. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Don, those cute corgis in the short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Oh, I'm awesome. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into, perfect, are perfectly, into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you knew so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering a new finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab a hold of it. But he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand, holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of your madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. I didn't think this through. That's my mouse hand. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, say it free. Eh. There it is. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a helping spork full up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. <laughs> Let's go. Please do a battle game. Uh, Van Van, do some, some, do something. Scooping up, oh, scooping up a fingerful. Van Van takes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and antiquity? Hold on there, Big Papa. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena, Colonel Sand. Oh wait, an arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both be very prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. <laughs> Can I have some potatoes, please? Van Van rushes back over. A cup of dish and sand. It's it's a freaking axe. <coughs> Mashed potatoes with gravy. Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce. Plated on a battle axe. Blade forged for my supreme chef ancestors. Uh, you've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite. It will look at me. I was envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. Oh, don't! Something about the dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus is rushed. And I may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, I, I think I left something in the oven. Uh, I, I, I don't feel so good. What the hell? It killed him! He's a, he legit died and he's a ghost now. Everyone, step back! Don't take another bite! Uh-oh. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped into Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment and is almost immediately back to his obvious self. Oblivious self. Oh, he's good. 
Let's see. Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are motionless as statuses. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against the poisons of all kinds. What? I'm not sure the professor's here making enough money. Uh, hello? I, I just turned into a ghost over here. That's bonkers. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. Well, like, for real? Come on! You, fo you, you follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Look at all those stars. Except for like right here. This is this is obviously where the stuff was getting cut off. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. You always speak softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now, no, now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Big Papa? There's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there! There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. I gave him an uh, accent now, too. Whoops. And every day, I've been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping. Never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should all follow our dreams with... All with our hearts, that our soul may grant them little fishes floating into a shooting star. Ugh. What? No, I. You. He just went Super Saiyan. Shut up! I'm the only one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Oh, his hair flipped up. Oh, it's back down. He went. He went flaccid again. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that! Hmm. I changed his voice on accident. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. <laughs> Forget him! Oh man, I can't remember his voice. Forget him! We're talking about me! Me, 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 me! I'm the hero! <laughs> I think that's it. What the fuck?! That's terrifying. The Splink Monster is here to fight a hero! The fuck? This is a bad dream. I, uh, I, I think I left the fridge open. Ladies and nerds! How dare you threaten me just as I was working my guard down and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid! Be very afraid! Me! Because I'm a monster, see? Is... He rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fighting sequence. What will you do? Hell yeah, attack! You decide to go for an attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love! Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upsets Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. I'm gonna defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. It seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure. You do. 
Pokemon so far focuses their mash, mash mind. It draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack! You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Quick with love! It does one damage. Spork monsters, no critical. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses utility tensile. You take two damages from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're going, not going to survive the battle. Defend! Which defense will you use? Buff up! No one can control this much buffness. You start to feel bloated and, quite frankly, a little gassy. You better attack soon or you're likely to explode. You decide to go on the attack. Wait a minute. I didn't choose to do that. Chow down! Does two damage. A powerful blow. Spoke monster is oozing cheese sauce under the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. A vile villain. Your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. What is that, like Zelda chickens? Hot Power Punch! Hot Pie Power Punch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me! An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Spare the wretched beast! You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of the gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is a still a living creature. With a pure soul who deserves no pi your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast! And don't you dare come back! for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. Oh, I won't forget this. I, I certainly won't be back like you said. This bulk monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with the golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco? That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Oh. Ugh. Ugh. Everything needs a pop. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. How did he know where I lived? And also, I don't remember this poster. He must have helped you get home in your tired state. You don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Instructing our love? That sounds weird. <laughs> Everyone's riding chicken. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used- <laughs> And then, there was that secret ingredient Then Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the sport monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I, I know this might sound a little strange, but uh, I think I might be uh, I think I like Clank. All right. Like him? Like, like, like? 
I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got him to talk after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, he's really sp